Arkansas. What's up, man? Staley, what's up? Jody, what's up? Well, fucking get Facebook. Why do you not have Facebook? You're a grown fucking man. For some reason, when I do live feed on these, I see a comment for a second and they disappear. I don't have a way to hold them there. Like, you can monetize YouTube better, which is why guys use it, but it doesn't do a lot of things that I can do on Facebook. I don't have a cool video for you or nothing. I'm literally just working, which is what I tell guys. Guys are like, well, how do I do this? How do I do that? I'm, well, fucking stand up and just do it. And that's, that's what it is happening. I'm just working. We'll do a live video on Facebook at 9, like always. I'm making uh, bifold wallets right now. I'm actually way behind on these, so I'm just sitting here and uh, getting some of these done so we can get them to some customers. Everybody left here. Um, at five, some of the guys were still here till like six. Went out on the four wheeler, rode the property, just checking on shit. We've got some trees down, we've got a process. And uh, topped off water and feed for all the uh, animals. going on if I'm not looking straight at uh, the screen when you comment it disappears Rich Smith, what's up? Jody, I'm making uh, bifold wallets, man. It started raining outside and it's fucking uh, thunder and lightning right now, so. Just in here getting some shit done. I look to see what side has better pattern on it. 
it'll be visible. Jody, have you seen Tim's truck in, in person? Have you seen it like in life? One of my new guys uh, that's working here, he uh, takes fighting pistol this weekend. So he's excited about that. A lot of guys in town, a lot of dudes were in here today. A lot of guys in town taking class. Cowboy Rolly, man, I, uh, I try to do the basics um, every day. And a lot of guys, a lot of guys start businesses and grow and take it in different directions. And then when things get weird or not as successful or things get tight, um, they always wonder why, but they never go back to basics. They never go back to what built them to begin with. So... I, uh, every day I, so well, for the most part, every day I do the basics. Drove past the compound the other week. Unfortunately, it was Saturday, so we, yeah, we, we're locked up on the weekends, man. Guys fucking pound on the door and shit all the time, or they just come and wander around the property. See what you guys really see here. getting rain to the point um, people are putting in row houses to be able to control it <laughs> Kerber what's up Kerber's the reason I'm inside because it's fucking thundering and lightning I never thought about uh, lightning I never worried about it I always just stayed outside always forever and uh, if it wasn't raining to the point that it was so miserable I was outside just doing whatever But I guess, I guess people do fucking get killed by lightning all the time. Bread riots. Let them eat bread. Rich Smith, thanks, man.
I didn't tell you to go inside. Have you become been collecting water for yes, yes. This is the first year that all of our garden stuff has been watered from rainwater. Um, and yes, we do have water collection. And we are adding more water collection all the time. And we're having a well put in as well. Uh, no suppressor pouches. There's too many damn different kinds of suppressors, man. Get these fucking suppressor companies to agree on what size suppressors they're gonna build, and we'll build a pouch for them. There's just too fucking many of them. Like, I got, there's 41 people. How many of you guys have suppressors, and what diameter and length are they? Like, you'll get 15, 20 dudes right here that say completely different shit. and roll first time viewer man watch some of my other videos i do a live video every night on facebook at nine o'clock where we talk about you know whatever you guys want to talk about and i show all the gear that we built this week that's available i have three of the same kind for that reason i got you man what kind do you have clint what what do you like and you have three of the same kind just for different guns, we'll call them weapon systems, um, or just different calibers or what. I got a box. I got the Osprey 45. It looks like a bread box. Osprey 45. Oh, that's a suppressor. The last suppressor I had was the uh, Mountain Dew liter bottle 50 years ago did you say you're putting a hand pump on your well no I said I'm having a well put in we're doing a 36 inch well 36 inches around. We're having another septic put in. We've got some tiny houses going in. Some really nice tiny houses actually we're putting in. Three hybrid 46 basically fits everything. Cool. Cool, cool. You have mag pouches for a Makarov. Uh, Barry Yeager. Barry, what's up? I don't fucking even know what a Makarov is. Isn't that a, a Russian pistol? I'm sure we do, bro. I'll meet you at the Sam's Club. We'll do the deal in the alley. We'll talk through TikTok. All you guys on here, you know we do a live video every night at 9 o'clock on Facebook, right? Ooh, that doesn't sound right. Something's going on. Something is askew. See? I don't use... YouTube because I don't see your guys' comments without physically touching the screen. Barry, man, just let me let me know what you need, man. Give me a, a pistol caliber, pistol mag that's in comparison. I'm sure our normal uh, pouches will fit, especially the Velcro lid ones. 
you ever have problems with predators? No, I have dogs, man. I have dogs. Dogs, literally 90% of the problems people have with predators will be solved simply by having dogs. But with dogs, you have to have fencing, which is why we put all that fencing you saw when you were here, because we're adding more dogs. We're adding bigger, more aggressive dogs, and we are not socializing them with, with humans. Like when you come here, those other dogs, the outside perimeter dogs, you won't see those. Those won't be out there where you can just pet them. I'm usually there every night, always. JB, thank you, man. Hey, John, good to see you up in the usual hard to work. Hillbilly, good to see you, man. Gonna have to catch those Facebook Lives. When did you guys start putting SOE tags on your belts? Um, forever, pretty much. Years and years and years and years ago. I don't, I don't really know the answer. We've always put tags. The tags switch to a, a nicer tag. If you got a belt that doesn't have a tag, it's probably because I built it and I forget to put tags on shit. But I'm in a bunch of, let me pause this. I'm listening to Tim cast. Um, Jody. So I'm in a bunch of, and I'll put you, well, you're, goddamn, you're not on Facebook, motherfucker. Oh shit, I said goddamn too. Um, you're missing fucking so much by not, I was gonna say, I'm in these poultry groups, free range poultry groups, and there's threads every day about predation. In Tennessee, you cannot, well, it's a gray area as to whether you can shoot hawks or trap them or kill birds of prey that come down and, you know, predate on your animals. And, and I, I don't. I've never had to. We have had a hawk come down and take um, one of our, my coolest roosters, Lance's rooster, Slip, Slip Willie, from a lot of the old videos. Um, but it is not an issue if your dogs kill one of those animals. So we have buzzards here. And I've never had a buzzard problem with the animals, but when baby cows are born, buzzards come down and eat their faces off. They peck their eyes out. So you've got this newborn calf that can't see. So you have to kill it. You have to put it down. And it's a very gray area, depending on your wildlife um, agent, as to whether you can dispose of those animals. So. The fix for that is dogs, and the way I, my dogs work is, I call it the hill, the front of the shop. It's about three acres that are fenced. So my dogs have that three acres to run. My birds are in a pen inside of that three acres. So the, there's an inner pen inside of the big three acre pen, and the ducks and the chickens are in there. Now we turn them out, we let them run the property. But when the, when the animals are locked up at night, all those ducks and all the poultry go into pens. The dogs can get all the way around the pens. So possums, uh, possums aren't a big problem. Like people, you hear people say possums are a huge problem. I, they've never been for me. Um, we've gone out and possums have been sleeping in our nest boxes at the old house in Cedar Lakes Estates. Um, here, the dogs run everything off. I've never had We've seen foxes outside the fence. We have seen possums outside the fence, raccoons. Um, we see all kinds of shit on game cameras. Uh, cats, neighborhood, you know, stray cats. Um, now, during the day, I have, there's 20 guineas out there also. And the guineas, anytime a shadow hits the ground, so buzzards, hawks, eagles, every time the, the guineas see that, they alert. And there's always, if you don't know, guinea, guineas are weird. They're an African, think of big African chicken, game bird kind of. They're big. Um, there's always, they run around in groups, let's say 10. While nine eat, one is always on alert. They always post, and you'll watch him. When he starts eating, another one will take his place, and they get usually a little higher if they can, or they got their heads up over the weeds, and they're just watching. Anytime something comes, they alert and it's a noise like a it's like some shit out of fucking the, the zoo you know when the howler monkeys start going it's like some africa shit the dogs when the guineas alert the dogs immediately snap too most livestock guardian dogs they're nocturnal 
they come alive at night. So they kind of nap during the day when it's hot. But when they hear those guineas, man, the dogs come on and you just hear the fucking barks and the roars, the roars coming. And they just work like that. And you're better off having more livestock dogs because they'll work as a team. So you have, the way it kind of works, I have Pyrenees dogs. They're big livestock guardian dogs. They're a lot, they look bigger than they are because there's so much fur. Those dogs will kill coyotes. They'll definitely kill small stuff. But the way these dogs work is through the bark. They ward shit off before the problem arises. But they will do work if need be. Then you go to your Anatolians, and you see Anatolians and uh, Pyrenees kind of together. Anatolians are a little more aggressive. If you have a big alpha male, he'll kind of walk further out on the perimeter. And then if you want to go like Anatolian Shepherd on steroids, um, Tangles. Now you've got a dog that can go 175, 200 pounds. Most of them are, you know, 135 to 150, but they move like a cat. It is a dog that literally moves like a lion. You could be out there, I could be out there with you, we could be talking and all of a sudden the dog just fucking pops up and rubs against you. You didn't hear it coming, 150 pound dog. They do work. They are bred to kill lions. Um, they're bred to kill wolves and bears. And they fucking, they're, they're huge animals and they work in packs of three, four, five, depending how much property and how much room you have for these animals. If you just search Kangle on YouTube, there's some very impressive videos through uh, thermal and night vision of them actually killing bears and killing packs of wolves. Um, they're bred, they're Turkish mountain dogs, and they're bred for all the nomad farmers that are moving their goats and their sheep around. Now, Evans Cattle Company is in Lexington, Kentucky, and the lady um, that owns that place, she has hundreds of acres. The lady that owns that place is the president of the American Kangle Society. Now, you're going to pay, you know, to get one of those dogs. There are other dogs, without having to get such pedigree, that will do work. And the thing with these dogs is, I have two sisters right now. When you put a puppy out there, over a year or two, those, those dogs, that puppy will learn to work like these two dogs work by emulating and they'll teach them. And when the puppy goes around and fucks with the livestock, these dogs will intervene. Like I had a, I had Baxter, that little beagle here for a little while. I gave it to Jason. When Baxter would mess with the, the animals, the other two dogs would get in between. They would T-bone him and fucking just tumble him because they know those are not house pets. They're not, they are not pets. Those are tools, just like, just like a Glock. It, it fires every time you pull the trigger. It's the hammer of the gun world. And that's how these dogs are. They don't come inside. They don't come outside the fence. Um, they're always matted up and smelly and dirty. They are wild animals that allow you to pet them because we bribe them every day with meat. I've socialized them. If you came here when I'm not here, good chance you'll get bit. Now the other dogs, way more highly aggressive and they're further back on the property closer to the building. So that's why we did the fencing. But Livestock Guardian Dogs, there are several groups on Facebook. Just search LGD or Livestock Guardian Dog. Search Anatolian, search um, Kangle. And you can do that on YouTube too. Um, if you're just looking for some entertainment and something kind of wholesome that's fucking not politics and bullshit and diversion, if you start searching any of those dogs on YouTube, videos will come up and there's some really good dog training channels. Like Mike Ritland has a great dog training training channel also. He's an ex-team guy. Um, and he, he worked with the dog Cairo, you know, the, on the Bin Laden raid. Um, but if you search Kangle and stuff, there's some survival channels too, some prepper channels that talk a lot about, you know, dogs for prepper and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's good. You can listen to it in the background, get some knowledge. Um, people have their different opinions, but uh, these dogs, you can, you like, I thought I wanted Cane Corsos. Cool dog, but they're very socialized to humans and they'll do work. Like you come on the property when you're not supposed to be here, they'll fucking chew your arm off. Like there's a good chance you come, people, I come home, you know, come back here or whatever, and there's a body here. Like the dogs have just fucking killed, like that's, that's very doable. But those dogs are high stress. They are related, they are part of the family. So. If you want a dog that's really going to protect your children and come inside and sleep at the foot of your bed, you know, Mastiffs, which a Cane Corso is, great animal. Um, 
but I wanted something more that will stay with the animals and not really travel with us. Like I don't want to have to take the time to train a, a Malinois or something like that. Um, Doberman's another great dog, man. Doberman's, you know, do work. And there's some big Dobies out there right now. But I, that's, I don't want to be a, a canine guy. I have animals that we have for food, and I need something to protect the animals and kill other animals that mess with them. And that's what livestock guardians do. Did I answer your question, uh, Jody? Like, I, was, I would totally put you in those groups. If anybody's on Facebook on my page and you want to get in those groups, let me know, and I'll, I'll add you or at least point you in the right direction. There's some really good knowledge. And the pastured poultry groups. A lot of stuff on pastured poultry. I've really been uh, raising chickens for four years now. We, we really stepped the game up to it's almost a, another job right now um, with all the COVID shit. But we're automating stuff. Like I have nest boxes up here right now that just came in. Cody put together. They have timers on them. So we walk out, you know, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and do um, we bribe the animals, really. We just shake some, some scratch to get them where we want them. Um, but the nest boxes, the chickens will sleep in the nest boxes and they'll shit in there and it makes a mess. And then they lay eggs and the eggs get shit all over them. Well, these nest boxes have a lock bar. So we lock them up in the evening. We just put it in the up position and I have a timer with an auto mechanism that whatever time I set it, mine are set for 5 a.m. My nest box bars fall down and make a clanking sound and the birds know the nest boxes are open and they go and they start nesting. This one box we have will handle up to 45 birds. They have another one that does 75, but there's a lot of automation, automated watering, automated feeders, all kinds of stuff. And you do them in row houses. They do these 50 foot row houses and you just tow your, your thing, your row house every, every day. And a 50 foot row house will accommodate a thousand birds. You can do meat or uh, egg birds. <clears throat> so it's somewhat automated. They have timer systems. So you just feed, fill hoppers, and then you set how much feed you want to um, put out, and then the same with the waterer, and not, then the batteries are all charged through solar panels. So you can build this yourself, sure, um, or you can buy. They start at about eight grand, and they go up to twenty-five grand, um, but it's automated. So depending how much, you know, how many eggs or how many you know birds you want to do at a time, we raised fifty. We just slaughtered twenty-five, and it's it's work. Like slaughtering is the job. Um, growing them and raising them is nothing. If but try to get a try to get an appointment at a slaughterhouse right now. You're probably a year out if you're lucky. So, you know it's it's work. So if you wanted to make some money, everybody's talking about that side hustle. You want to be valuable. Like if you want to make money, be valuable. Add value to people. Add value to people around you. They will want you around. Be a butcher, man. Not just not just a slaughterhouse, but be a butcher. Man, there is money for it right now. Fuck, we just drove two and a half hours to pick up half a cow that we bought six months ago. And that was the closest, nearest date and the nearest butcher two and a half hours away from here. So we bought all the poultry processing equipment short of having a, a slab and everything with drains in it. Like we have everything to process. Um, not like some hobby shit either. Like we bought real legit processing equipment. So I think we will eventually put a slab in and put a steel building over it, but we're gonna build the slab with drains that, that terminate outside uh, into the woods, into a, a catchment, and uh, you know put a PTAC, not a PTAC, but a mini split unit on there, and then put freezers inboard so that we can, uh, walk-in coolers attached so that we can hang our shit and uh, process on site. So we're learning as we go. Uh, very informative. I appreciate the information. Glock Almighty, man. Thanks for being here. Put 500 pounds of wheat berries and 500 corn up yesterday. Prepping is my second. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand. So let me ask you, where'd you get the corn from, Jody? What kind of corn did you get? You know that most of the corn that we grow in the United States, you cannot eat. Now, in a push, you could grind it and make cornmeal out of it. I recommend that you try that now. Like uh, Jacob says, you know, um, Wheat grinders don't shit loaves of bread. P play with that shit. You will also find that when you grind wheat and you make wheat and you make flour and then you make bread, it is not the bread you're accustomed to eating. So play with it, fuck with your recipe, try it. We're super lazy. Um, Amanda eats pretty much no bread right now. She's back to keto. But I like um, 
whole grain. But what kind of what kind of corn is what I'm saying? Did you get deer corn? Did you get corn from Tractor Supply? If so, you got dent corn. Um, popcorn stores, and you can make that into a better corn meal. Um, yeah, bought two grinders and waiting on an electric one and just sort of, so you bought two grinders. What kind of grinder? Did you get a country harvest grain mill? Because if you did, you just change the plates and you can do beans or corn or um, wheat. And then I would recommend buying like I don't know about Ninja, but I have a Vitamix blender. They have a pitcher for grinding wheat into flour. So electricity trumps everything, but if electricity goes out, Country Harvest Grain Mill has a, a bigger uh, pulley on it, and you can attach that with a belt to an exercise bike and a hand crank, and I bought the extra bar, and then you need some place to mount it. You're not gonna mount that bitch on a, on a shaky ass table, right? So you need to mount it to something, build a good bench to put it on, or mount it to a plate that you can then clamp to another surface or something. Because you're gonna have to drill holes to get it really stable. Because when you fucking start grinding, it takes some, you gotta get a little momentum to it. Dayton, what's up, man? Dayton. What else? Homegrown Liberty Podcast has a couple of train a couple of trainings, LGDs. Tactical redneck equipment. Right on. Right on. Tactical redneck equipment. What do you what do you sell, man? What kind of equipment are we talking? My dogs aren't bred protection dogs. They're farm working dogs, no pets. So they did okay watching the livestock for being at Chesapeake Bay and German Pointer, but they are ancient and lazy now. So typically too, those dogs have a high prey drive, right? Pointers, um, those are hunting dogs. So when we take them to the field, they want to nose down, pick a scent, and run until something flushes. That's what those dogs are bred for, for the most part. Not guinea pigs. No, not guinea pigs. Um, and don't stick a guinea pig up your butt. I mean, when we sent out all those guinea pig sale pouches, they, we gave you little guinea pigs. They said for rectal use only because I couldn't find stickers that said not for rectal use. So we knew you guys would get a laugh out of that. Our barn cats basically wild and they do this. Yes, yeah, so the way to get a cat to hunt, because I have five cats right now and they need some jobs because they're fucking lazy because we feed them. So if you have mouse problems, cut your cat feed down, if not off, and they will mouse. Sewing is an awesome skill. James Owens. I, I agree, man. It's allowed me to do everything I've done. And I run in a lot of directions and I have a lot of ideas and when I have my staff is really good and on point, I'll run and do other things. But every time things constrict or something happens or there's concern, I always fall back to the basics, which is the sewing. Never had a flock of chickens do a beeline to me when I was out at Alumni. Hi, John. I never had a flock of chickens do a beeline to me when I was at Alumni Weekend. That's because they're, they're looking for food. If people are coming towards that fence line, it's to feed them. Those are not pets. So you can get an animal to do almost anything you want if it's hungry. Like this cat that runs around here. Amanda couldn't get it, ever get it to crate up, right? I said, well, stop feeding the fucking thing. Feed it at night when you want it. Always that's its feeding time. That cat will go wherever you want it to go. I'm usually there every night. Always look for JB right on. Okay, let me see comments here. Not selling anything yet. Shut the business down on my last appointment. About to tool back up right on. Are you tactical redneck that was here the other day with Nicole? Is that is that you, bro? 500 pounds with tractor supply whole corn feed. Put up about 100 pounds of popcorn seed. Also trying to connect with local farmers. So yeah, get with your local farmers. A lot of farmers will grow, you know, fucking several acres of, um, you know, peaches and cream, different types of corn. Corn's good. Do you eat corn? I know you were doing keto and shit. Corn fucks a lot of people up. A lot of people, when they remove corn from their diet, they just automatically shed 20, 30 pounds. It causes something that it collects in the lining of your bowels and your intestine. There's a lot of people that have corn allergies and don't even realize it. And a lot of it, it might not be whole corn or raw corn, it's the corn syrups that they're allergic to. Appreciate your no bullshit approach to life and business. Go Navy. T. Andrews, thank you for being here, man. Redneck, right on, man, right on. Good. Cool. Well, I just turned this video on just to sew some pouches. Like, 
it's really accountability, right? Everybody's like, what do I need to do, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, fucking work more. What? Yeah, it's really that simple. If you need to get more shit done, do it fucking faster. You know how you get twice as much shit done? You move your fucking hands twice as fast. That's how you get more shit done. And people always want this... They want to have this in-depth hour conversation where you literally tell them that. That's the secret sauce. But, but, like, if you're having a conversation with me, you say but twice, there's no third but. Like, I've already shut off. We're done. You ask me. I didn't give, I don't ever offer free advice, ever. If you ask me, I will give you advice. But you only get a couple minutes of it when you start using those words, but. I want to start a business. What do you want to do? I want to do this. Okay, this is what you need to do. Blah, blah, blah. Have you looked it up? All the answers are on YouTube. No. Okay, well, then you don't want to start the business. You just want to insert yourself into the conversation and play business. You want to get some business cards made. You don't want to run a business. Corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup. Yep, hillbilly. All that corn that was just fucking 10 million acres or whatever that was just laid flat, terrible for those people. Horrible, right? You and I aren't eating that corn. That's animal feed. Pink rig delete 12 gauge replacement shipped already. Pain, right on. So that was the Typhon Pink Thread Pals Micro, right? And you opted for something else. Playing around to see with these prep foods, but back into keto as well. So think of prep foods, uh, weapons junkie, for like you and I. Somebody, somebody like Nicole Sauce or somebody, prep food. That's just what she calls normal day life, right? She can take all that and turn it into whatever. But for you and I putting food in buckets and shit, you're gonna think like expanding soups, stews. We're gonna make a base of ramen. We're gonna put all that bullshit in there and then fucking hopefully we're gonna add some protein meat to it that's not plant protein. And Emergency Essentials right now, I just got an email from them. Um, Emergency Essentials has a lot of cans. They've got uh, canned food and number 10, you know, dehydrated, not dehydrated, but uh, freeze dried. And they've got chicken breast and taco meat and everything. Those cans are typically $60 a can. There's six cans to a case. They stack neatly. They don't take a lot of extra dead space. Um, and then your fruits and veggies, powdered milk, powdered eggs, shit like that's $25, $30 a can. You want to add protein. Silage corn, 95% of the corn grown around the, yep, and you cannot eat it. Pull off the side of the road, grab one, and try eating that shit. It will not work for you. Silage corn, dent corn is a type of corn. That's also a Monsanto or ConAgra corn. If you took that corn and took seeds from it and you tried to grow that corn, all that corn has terminator genes. That corn will not grow for you. ConAgra, Monsanto, the devil, right? Everybody knew that. So they changed the name. They buried it in other companies. Bayer, Bayer, the pharmaceutical company, owns all of those companies. Or did. I mean, I'm sure that they change it still every couple of years. You know, Bayer, the ones that had the uh, AIDS-tainted blood, that when they found out they had a bunch of uh, blood and plasma that was tainted with AIDS, what did we do with it? Oh, we sent it to Italy. Nicole Sauce keeps rice and beans. No feeding. For feeding people. Not That's, see, that's what I'm telling you. What you and I call prepping, she just calls every day. <laughs> I didn't know what she liked. Bourbon? I'm gonna have to send her some bourbon. What's some what's some really, really good bourbon? I don't drink bourbon. I like corn syrup in my alcohol, you know, margaritas. And for all you guys drinking that uh, diet sweetener, you know, margarita sauce and diet sweeteners, those all do the same thing to your insulin level. Just just be aware. All that zero sugar, zero calorie shit. It all spikes your insulin. It has a polished sugar in it. Ask any vet, what did the dog die from? Cancer. What is the number one filler in food? Corn. Yeah, oh yeah, fuck yeah. Uh, raw, raw dog, raw dog food. So you're supposed to kill your Cornish crossbirds at eight weeks. We killed ours at 14 weeks. 
We have not cooked one yet. If they are tough, what will we do with them? We will split them, quarter them, and feed them to the dogs raw. Dogs can eat raw bones, including raw chicken bones. It's when you cook them that the bones become an issue. We will use every bit of that. Our birds were so big that they did not fit in extra large shrink bags. We have to get turkey bags to put them in. We had to cut the legs and wings off of the birds to get these things to fit. She does like birds. Yeah, I watched her on her uh, Unloose the Goose podcast last night. The dairy next door lets me have a couple tons of silage every year to feed to my breeder heifers. What? You have fucking cows? Every year to feed to my breeding heifers. You have cows? This is Jody, right? Mark Taft, thanks for being here, man. Although I prefer the Facebook Live videos, the YouTube videos do a much better job with the comments. They are not delayed. See, Carrie... Carrie Daly, I can't see the comments. I have to physically stop what I'm doing because there, boom, it just went dead. So if I touch the screen again and scroll up, it shows me the comments. The reason people do live videos on on YouTube more than Facebook because the money's better. I can do super chats. Um, basically, you bribe me to read your comment or bribe me to go look your order up or whatever bullshit, right? Let's just be real. That's what it is. Um, I get paid a lot more doing YouTube videos than on Facebook. Jody is weapons jump. Got you. Okay. Got you, bro. Got you. Um, so that's the deal. But it's, it's much more cumbersome for me to do this. And on this iPad, I have yet to find a way to keep the comments uh, lit up like they do on Facebook. Try pressure canning those tougher. Yeah. Or we'll just, we'll just use them for chicken and dumplings, man. But we're buying, I'm gonna buy a rotisserie, like a real rotisserie, so that we can just rotisserie uh, the chickens. I like to have rotisserie chickens whenever Wa Amanda goes to Walmart or whatever, we'll take two of those, I'll break them all down, and then we'll use them in quesadillas, we'll use them in salads, we'll just, chicken and waffles. She'll eat chicken and salad, I'll eat chicken and waffles while I'm fat, because I like the syrup. Tres yeah, pressure canning. I have two of the, uh, the largest um, all-American pressure canners Thank you and Amanda for all the email promos. Great promo. Right on. We have a good one going this week. You get a free um, grocery bag, and I think we're giving you a free T-shirt. You don't get to pick the shirt. You get to pick the grocery bag, though. And it's not its not a lame T-shirt. It's a good T-shirt. I am missing all of my Sharpies. I do not know where this shit. I'm the only one that sits here. Chisery chickens are very tasty. Yes. Yes, so we pack the chicken dumplings. All right, guys. I got to go find uh, Sharpies, and I have to pee. Been searching like crazy for an all-American. Snag a couple 23-quart Prestos. Yeah, I guess all that shit has dried up, man. I'm sure that last year all-American didn't think, man, we better ramp up and build a million pressure canners. I'm trying to buy. I don't know that. Hard I'm trying to buy. I mean, I see them for sale. I'm buying a number 10 canner, and there's plenty of them out there, all American, and it's hand cranked. But I want the ability to electrify it also. So maybe like the wheat grinder, I'll buy an electric and a hand one. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thanks for bullshitting with me. Nine o'clock, we'll do a live TV on Facebook. I gotta plug this in.